LGBT is not to do with sin only. If it were to do with sin only, then no one can ever talk and say anything because all of us are sinners. What is the difference between this sinner and that? Nothing. Both are sinners and in need of God's mercy. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is God's mercy. But LGBT is much greater and harsher than sin. It's got to do with It's a crime. It's a crime in the sight of God. It's not only sin. When it comes to sin, all of us are sinners. I can't judge. I'm another sinner, just like them. But it's a crime in the sight of God more than sin. Why? Because LGBT is the abolishment of human identity. The abolishment of the very human identity which God chose to give from the very beginning. God said, this is a male. And God said to the other, you are a female. This is human identity given by God to the man and the woman. You're a male and a female. This is your identity. The moment you come out of that identity, you are no longer in that human cycle or circle. Not. Because when you came to earth, you were a male. When you came to earth, you were a female. When this male comes and says, I don't want to be a male, I want to be a female, he changed that human identity which God gave. Therefore, you cannot be neither a male nor a female now since you abolished the very identity given to you by God. I hope we are listening. I'm not judging. I love the LGBT people. I love them. I'll always pray for them. But I will never, ever bless their lifestyle never ever accept their lifestyle impossible and I can only give you the blessings as a church leader when you come out of that lifestyle confess your sins before the Almighty God and repent and come back then you can be blessed but to choose to live in that life willingly happily as if it is normal and you expect the church leader to bless you Lord have mercy Lord have mercy on your beloved church I wish I had never seen the day our beloved Catholic Church taking such an action I love the Catholic Church I'm trying to be very reserved. Because I love the Catholic Church. That's why. The Catholic Church is my church. Don't talk about the Catholic Church. If the leadership is corrupt, the church is holy. The church is holy. So, I'm begging you, Pope Francis. This document needs to be withdrawn as if it never existed. Because, sorry to say this with humility, you don't have the jurisdiction to give such a blessing. You do not. You do not hold that key. You do not. Neither you nor me nor any other church leader I'm not talking about Pope Francis. There is no church leader that can give such a blessing. Impossible. 
We are living in the end of times, my beloved. You will see a lot of colors. The Lord pre-warned us. So don't panic. Don't be disheartened. Don't walk away from your faith. Don't walk away from your church. The church is built on the rock. But if the leader wishes not to be built on the rock, that's his problem, not the church. He will have to give an account to the rightful owner of the church, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And all of us. But we don't hold the key to give a blessing to such a lifestyle. We don't. God will not allow it. God never gave it, never will. Who am I to override God's word? Whoa. Now this has gone too far. So to my beloved Catholic, Christian Catholics, keep on praying. Love your church. Don't be discouraged or disheartened. Don't ever walk away from the Lord, from the faith. The Pope is here today, I'm not saying. May the Lord take from my life and add to the life of Pope Francis. And I mean it. May the Lord give me the pains and relieve Pope Francis from all his pains. But sorry, my dear Pope, I love you, but the truth hurts. We need to withdraw that letter, that document, whatever you want to call it. Fatushia Saplakan. That's what they call them. Big titles, but unfortunately very empty from within. We need to withdraw that letter, my dear Pope, because it caused a lot of discomfort within our, your beloved followers. It has caused a lot of division within the church. There are, there are bishops in Africa, in Europe, that are in total disagreement and will never accept such a document. And they came out in the public, in public, and said it loud and clear. But it's so sad to see so many other bishops and cardinals in agreement with the Pope. So sad. And priests. And their, and their sort of reason is, oh, well, it's just a blessing. It's not a sacrament of marriage. It's just a blessing. Well, if you're going to bless, so if this couple come to any Catholic priest and say, look, uh, the Vatican has accepted us to receive a blessing from you, and the Pope signed off on it. So we're coming today to be blessed by, the, by, the, by you, dear priest. And uh, while we are being blessed, uh, we, uh, we did, we done some floral arrangements. And, oh, and on the way, we grabbed the cameraman and the video man. It's a blessing. And we decided to make it kind of colorful while we're getting blessed by you. What are you going to say? No. And if you're going to bless this kind of a lifestyle, how about if somebody comes to you, dear Pope, and says, I live with three women and they need blessings. Because one woman, she's got a great brain. The other one's got great hands. The other one's got um, great skills to cook for me. So the three combination, the three put together is a great combination. I live like a king. Can you bless them for me? What's the difference? One of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for another blessed Friday evening, 7 p.m. all the way from Sydney, Australia. For those who are with us here in this holy church, a very warm welcome to all of you. And for those who are watching us through live streaming, whether you are in Australia or abroad, may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you, God, you and protect you, give you good health both physically and spiritually. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, actually, we will be reading the psalm. Stand up. <laughs> psalm number 49. Hear this, all peoples, give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the mediation of my heart shall give understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. Why should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity at my heels surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly, and it shall cease forever that he should continue to live eternally and not see the pit, for he sees wise men die. Likewise, the fool and the senseless person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inner thought is that their houses will last forever. Their dwelling place is to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man Though in honor does not remain, he is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish and of their posterity who approve their sayings. Like sheep they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave, far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. The while he lives, he blesses himself. For men will praise you when you, when you do well for yourself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. A man who is in honor yet does not understand is like the beasts that perish. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? Uh, not again. How are we? How are we? Yes. How are we? Yes. Uh, oh, what a feeling. Fantastic. That's the way. Fantastic is the way. Yes. Good, great, beautiful, like me, stunning. Um, any new faces for the first time? A show of hands. First time. Yes. Oh, we've got a couple here. We've got a couple at the back. Wonderful. Over here. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, a very warm welcome to those who are with us for the first time. I'm very blessed and privileged to be with you for another Bible session. And those who have been coming on a regular basis, I pray you continue. For Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no one but Him. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Are we ready? All right. Um, we will continue our topic for last week, which we never came to finish, because I don't know. I just went to different branches, and uh, the Holy Spirit was was going uh, his own ways, so I had to follow the Holy Spirit. So we will read again. It is uh, the Book of Revelation, chapter three, verses seven to thirteen. Revelation three, verses seven to thirteen. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says, He who is holy, who is true, who has 
He who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you, because you have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the new name, the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, and all glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Well, to those who are with us for the first time, just a brief intro. We've been talking about the book of Revelation, and we said that the Lord Jesus' church is one and one and only. She is the beloved of the heavenly groom, the bride to the heavenly groom. And this church is one. There is no churches, it is only one. For the church is the body of Christ, and Christ has only one body. And this church, in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the Lord Jesus is revealing to us what will happen to His beloved church throughout history. From the birth of the church in Pentecost, the 50th day, until the second coming and taking his beloved church, complete, perfect, without a stain, without a blemish, into the Father's house. And from the birth till taking the church up to the Father's house, the church will go through seven different stages throughout the history of mankind. It begins with Ephesus, ends with Laodicea or Laodicea. Ephesus, uh, all these names are of Greek origin. Ephesus, beloved, the first century. Smyrna, the bitter one, second and third century, martyrdom. Third one, Pergamos, where the church and the state became united as in the betrothal, matrimonial bond, just like husband and wife become one, the church and state government became one in Pergamos. And that was after the third century, heresy came out when church united to government. Heresy came out, false teachings came out because of this unity. You have to be very careful who to unite to. Church is, needs to be united to Christ and Christ only. We pray for the world, but we have no part of the world, my beloveds. For the world is darkness, the church is the light to this world. And then, stage number four was um, Theatira. And that was the 11th century, the Great Schism, 1054, where the church became divided West Catholic, East Orthodox, because it became theater. Everybody started acting on everybody else. They did not take the true role as leaders in the church, but they put on the mask and they became actors. And an actor takes up a role that is not his. And then because of Pergamos, where church and state became united, it caused division in the church in, in Theatira, East and West, Catholic and Orthodox in 1054 AD. And because of that division, another division came, and that was Sardis. Sardis, the 16th century, Protestantism came out out of the Catholic Church. Martin Luther was the finale that stamp sealed it, and he walked away. He was excommunicated by Pope Leo X, and because of that, he protested against the Pope and against the Catholic Church. And till this very day, because of this division, we are still suffering a, over 700 million Protestants worldwide and more than 30,000 branches in Protestantism and everyone says I'm right. 
So good luck to find which head to follow. Philadelphia is our topic. Philadelphia and Laodicea, which I won't be able to speak about Laodicea today, but I'll continue with Philadelphia. Philadelphia and Laodicea are together. The 20th, 21st century, the end of times. We are living in the end of times. We are living in the time of Philadelphia and Laodicea. This is the end of times, not the end of the world, the end of times. And every end of time is a 2,000 year cycle. From Adam to the great flood of Noah, 2,000 year cycle. From the time of Abraham to the Lord Jesus, 2,000 year cycle. And from the Lord Jesus till now, we've gone into 2,000 and a bit year cycle. We are living end of times. What happened in every cycle of end of time? Something great happens on a global level. The great flood affected the entire globe. Today, Corona, the great flood, is the beginning to the mark of the beast, is the beginning to the new world order, is the beginning to the end of times. Something magnificent, not magnificent, something of great magnitude happens in every end of time cycle. And every end of time cycle, faith, love for God diminish. Becomes less and less. People walk away from God every 2,000 years. Walk away from God. That's why God comes, shakes the ground beneath us to remind us, I'm still God. And I'm still around. Nothing is lost. Nothing is forgotten. It is all within my grasp. I am the sovereign authority. Not Satan. Not the secret societies. Not government leaders not church leaders, I am in charge, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy name. Philadelphia, Philos Delphos, brotherly love, brotherly love, Leodikia, Leos, nation, people, Dikia, rebellious. So Leodikia, the rebellious nation, or the rebellious church, the rebellious people. So in the end of times, the church will rebel against Jesus Christ himself. The church will go against the Lord. And don't we see it, my beloved? Arna, do you see it? I do. I do. But Philadelphia is brotherly love. There is a lot of brotherly love happening as we speak. A lot of people preach about the Lord Jesus in every channel you open on those social media platforms. Many preachers, many people are preaching the gospel. This is the brotherly love. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the savior. Everybody needs to come back to Jesus. He is God revealed in the flesh. A lot of people are talking about the Lord in the brotherly love Philadelphia. But the more they are talking about the Lord, the more people are veering off the road as well. Laodicea. They are rebelling. Christians are walking away from Christ. Christian nations, they were once upon a time. Today they are nothing but atheistic nations. Europe. Atheism destroyed Europe. Churches are now nothing but monuments, museums, empty places. No more worshippers. They gone to the world into the bosom of Satan. Because the church forgot about Christ. And I mean church leaders. Like moi. We forgot about Christ. We did not feed the flock the truth. We seeked worldly glories. We seeked our own thrones, our own pockets. We became rich financially, not spiritually. And this is the problem of our church. That's why we are suffering, we're struggling. It's, that's all it is. Because we walked away from the Lord. If we didn't, Corona wouldn't have come. No one can do anything, my beloveds, unless the Lord says so. No one. You want to believe it? You don't want to believe it? That's the truth. That will never change. 
But look at Philadelphia, so I don't keep you here for 20 hours. Even though I really, really want to keep you for 20 hours. But anyway. And to the angels of the church of Philadelphia write, these things says he who is holy. We spoke about that, about this holy, you know, in, in, in details. And we said that brothers to be living in this brotherly love, God is holy. He needs to be holy. The one who is with you is the holy one. What does holy mean? Light. I don't want to repeat what I said. You can go back to that video. But holy means light. And what is light? Love. God is love. And God is the light of the world. When God is with you, there is love. And wherever there is love, there is Philadelphia brotherly love. And the only way for this, for brothers to love one another in Christ Jesus, they must walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. For God to be present with you and you present with him, you must be in his light. And to be in his light, you must be walking in the spirit because the spirit is light, the body is darkness. And what I mean the body, I mean materialistic person, worldly person, earthly person, a person that walks through materialism, flesh, earthly things, can never love the love of God. Through the love of God, can never. If you are a worldly person, you can never love your brother the way Jesus wants it. Because if you're walking in the flesh, you're walking in darkness and God is light. And unless you walk in the spirit, you will never understand what true love is all about. You will never. The world will never give you the love of God. It is only God that gives that love. If your heart is in this world, you cannot love the way Jesus wants you. You need to come out of this world. You need to come out of materialistic things. You need to come out of worldly things. You need to come out of temporal things and walk in the spirit. And the spirit is the truth. And the truth shall set you free. When Jesus is in your heart, you are free. And when you are free with the Lord, you are walking in his love. Then and then only when you say to your brother, I love you, it comes from the heart to the heart. And don't we feel it when somebody is speaking the language of the heart or someone speaks the language of the lips? We, we can tell. The language of the heart goes straight to the heart and you can feel that it's coming genuinely. But when someone is faking it, you can also feel it and you can tell. The Lord says to the leader of Philadelphia, brotherly love, since you are loving one another in, in me, Jesus Christ, I am the Holy One. The Holy One, I am the light. I am in you, with you, with my spirit. You walk in the spirit, then you'll be able to love one another. Because it is through that spirit, Holy Spirit, the love of God is given to you to share with one another. Without the truth, the Holy Spirit cannot give you the love of God. And therefore you will never understand. Now, says I'm the Holy One who is true. See, holiness, truth go hand in hand. When you are in the presence of the Lord, there is only one thing, truth. Truth. And what we, are, what we are bombarded with by the world is nothing but lies. The reason why lies are being given to people through social media platforms everywhere even through the educational system there are lies. Evolution is a lie. Carl 
Darwin. Darwin was an atheist. Now for, for an atheist to come and tell me that what created me is mother nature, then you go back to that mother nature. Let me see Darwin where you are now. Steve Hawkins, where are you? Where are you? The greatest physicist in the world. He was trying to figure out how the universe came about. Good luck. Unless we come back to God, you will never ever understand how this universe came about. And this God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And now we have the global warming. Another big lie. And by the way, this, uh, you know, I was talking about this new variant called Omicron. Congratulations. Now, Omicron, I said it is the mother of Corona because in Arabic, Om means mother. So, Om Corona, Omicron, the mother of Corona. Now there is a new variant. Now there is a new variant called the sister of the mother of Corona. I told you, you're going to have all the tribes coming along. The cousin, the sister, the brother, you name it. The world is lacking wisdom, has knowledge but no wisdom. And all the knowledge put together equals ignorance. Without wisdom it is ignorance. For an educated person to come and say there is no God, there is no greater ignorant statement than this. I'm the Holy One, I am the truth. Jesus is the truth. You want to be free? Be embedded in Christ. Hold on to the Lord. He's the only one that's going to tell you everything as is. He will never twist nothing. He who has the key of David, we spoke about this. He opens and no one shuts. We spoke about this and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. I have opened a door before you, no one can shut. Because you've kept my word, you have little strength. Through this little strength, you have kept my word and, I have not and you have not denied my name. I've kept a door open before you, no one can shut. When the Lord opens the door, no one can ever shut it. And when the Lord shuts the door, no one can open it. You better have faith and you better have trust in this. When the Lord opens the door in your way, no one can shut. And when the Lord shuts it, no one can open it. So stop relying on yourself. Stop relying on people. Stop relying on Satan. You better need to come back and start relying on Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For there is no God but Him. There is no other way but Him. And when He opens the door, do not be afraid if the whole world shuts their door in your face. For when the Lord opens it, no one can shut it. And when the Lord shuts it, no one can ever open the door. So, when you're praying and asking the Lord to marry Rachel, and you end up marrying Elizabeth instead, thank Lord for it. Because he shut the door on Rachel, opened it on Elizabeth. When you prayed about a business and you went to do it and it didn't work out, thank the Lord because you asked Him, He shut the door out of love. Don't ever question it. Because don't pray and then be suspicious of what you have prayed about. The Lord is faithful. He said, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you'll find, knock and the door will open. When you've asked Him, period, done, Leave it with him. Go in peace. Never look back because the Lord has heard you and the Lord is faithful to his promise. I am with you all the days of your life 
and until the end of all ages, I'm with you. Why are you worried? Have you ever seen a bird dying with a heart attack or a high level of cholesterol? Blockages in the arteries, having a stroke. Have you ever seen a bird going somewhere, finding food, eating? And when, when that bird was full, started packing some more food in a bag to take it with them somewhere else? Never. The bird eats, is full, flies away and leaves everything behind. Why? Because the bird says, I believe and I trust my creator. Just like he provided food for me today, he will definitely provide it tomorrow because the God who created me and everything and everyone never changes. Never changes. But because we think too much, the blood pressure is up, the arteries are blocked, I've got a stroke, I've got a heart attack, and I've got all the problems in the world. Stop worrying. Leave it to the Lord. Leave it to the Lord. Leave it to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Believe me, when you mean it and you leave it to the Lord, you live very happy. And you know what? Everything will start falling into place. The, the more you keep on worrying and thinking, what if, what if, what if, the Lord is going to say, you are a hindrance in my way. You are not letting me free to fix it for you. You ask me for it, leave it. I'm going to fix it. So move out of the way and let Jesus come in. Let Jesus come in. Be strong. Be strong. Verse 9. So I don't keep you here for 20 hours. <laughs> A skinny guy said to the fat guy, what go What's going down, brother? The fat guy replied and said, Everything. That's why I'm fat. Everything. <laughs> now, with all love and respect to all the fat people, they are absolutely beautiful. This is just a joke. Nothing personal. Nothing personal. Actually, I love fat people more than skinny people. Okay, verse 9. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. Why is he mentioning about the synagogue of Satan and Jews and they are not, but lie? Because in the beginning he said, it is he who has the key of David. Who has the key of David? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So he holds the key of David to the Jews till this very day. The most, you know, venerated kings of all is King David. And the star of David is on their flag till this very day. So he is the most respected out of all to the Jews, King David. He said, I hold the key to King David. But they call themselves Jews, but they are not. They lie. I'll bring them and I'll make them what worship before your feet remember this he who has the Lord Jesus he who holds on to the Lord Jesus he who trusts in the Lord Jesus if you put him in your heart and you truly believe he is your Lord your God your Savior everything if the whole world go against you, one day the Lord will bring the whole world and make it, make it bow before you. Whoever goes against a person that has Christ in their heart, they will be put to shame at the end. They may persecute you at the beginning, yes. They may go against you and prosper for a short time, yes. But at the end, the Lord is always triumphant. Everyone that's gone against you, sooner or later, the Lord will bring them and make them bow before your feet. For he who has the Lord will never be put to shame. Never. That's why never ever be upset or angry with anyone that has gone against you. Never ever hold any grudges toward no one that has hurt you. Never ever say, I will never 
say hello to you till death you will never hear me you will never see my face next time you see them greet them bless them and wish them all the best and be absolutely happy for what they have done you have been rewarded greatly in the end those who have gone against you those who have upset you those who have denied you those who have sold you those who have kicked you out those who have trampled over you they have become the reason for the jewels and the and the precious pearls Christ is going to give you in the end and you know what at the end they'll come back and they will say to you please forgive me I'm sorry they will the Lord will make sure that this will happen and Jesus is stunning we are not here for myself I'm not here for myself I'm not here for my mom for my dad for my brother for my sister for my wife for my husband for my relatives I'm not here for no human being I'm here for this man the crown of my glory this man when you are for this man then and then only you're able to love to, to know how to love your mom your dad your husband your wife your brother your sister people in your life then you will know how to love them without this man nothing comes good nothing so when you are on earth the very purpose of your existence on earth is to serve your Jesus then why are you so worried about how people treat you whether good or bad it's beside the point because I'm not here for them so if they love me good for them and if they hate me I pray for them but I'm here for my sweetheart Jesus love me or hate me it is totally beside the point neither love will boost me and lift me up nor hatred will bring me down and give me hopelessness I am walking steady I'm neither a mountain nor a valley and that's what John the Baptist said I am the voice crying in the wilderness when he was asked by the Pharisees and the scribes who are you then he said I am the voice crying in the wilderness prepare the way for the coming Messiah for the mountains will be brought down and the valleys filled and lifted up you know what John the Baptist was saying mountains pride valleys losing hope he said if you have too much pride come down and if you have lost hope come up for the one who comes after me who is before me his way is straight neither pride nor hopelessness in it it is absolute faithfulness steady be steady don't let nice words make you a mountain boastful and don't let nasty words make you a valley losing hope you are the child of your most high God your heavenly daddy in heaven I'm here for my Lord now I'll bring them and I'll make them worship before your, your feet and to know that I have loved you my goodness the Lord made a promise since I have loved you I'll make sure those who have gone against you will come and bow before you and say sorry to you verse 10 because you have kept my command to persevere I also will keep you from the hour of trial because you have kept my command to persevere on earth we are living We are living the kingdom of heaven and perseverance. Christians, on earth, you are living the kingdom of heaven with perseverance. When you persevere, all the trials, all the tribulations, all the hardships that, are, that have come and will ever come toward you, when you persevere through all the difficulties throughout your life's journey on earth in the end the next life you will live the kingdom of God and its glory its perseverance on earth 
but it is glory in heaven. And unless we persevere, we will never be glorified. What is perseverance? Good Friday. What is glory? Sunday resurrection. I cannot expect to be given the glory of the resurrection unless I carry the cross and be crucified with Christ on Good Friday. Without pain, there is no gain. Without perseverance, there is no glory. So on earth, we are living the commandment of Christ and His perseverance. If you love me, carry my cross and follow me. And if you love me, call me. Oh, come on, answer the phone, please. It's Jesus calling. Sorry, Lord, I'm busy. <laughs> uh, talking about you? Okay, thank you, bye. <laughs> it is perseverance. Do I have the time? Do you have the time? Yes. By the way, is it hot? Like temperature-wise? Yes. It is? Can we make it a little bit cooler? I know it's my presence, I'm just hot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Before, you know, when good old days, I used to say, my name is Bishop Murray. I'm single and available. I'm hot, you're not. <laughs> there you go. Um, there are, this is not our topic, but speaking of perseverance, there are five books. They are all in the Old Testament. They are referred to as the poetic books. They're referred to as the poetic books, five books. Book of Job. Book of Psalms, um, Book of Proverbs, uh, Book of uh, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, or Song of Solomon. These five books are in the Old Testament. They are called the poetic books. If you want to learn how to live a life of perseverance on earth, read the book of Job. The book of Job teaches you on how to persevere in painful situations, in hardships, heartaches. Job had a wife and 10 sons, had wealth, could have, buy, could have bought all of Sydney. He lost it in a blink of an eye. His 10 sons killed and his wealth gone and his health was gone. His body was being eaten by termites and he was still blessing God. You lose 10 kids, all of them. You lose all your wealth, you lose all your health and you still thank God for it. Now that is called perseverance through difficulties. What have we gone through? What do we know about hardships? What do we know about difficulties? What do we truly know about pain? Have we seen what people have gone through for me to say, my situation is the worst in the world? It's not. There are people much worse than you, but they're still grateful to God. You need to learn. Perseverance. When you persevere in difficulties, God, the Lord Jesus, will lift you up to the next step, Book of Psalms. What is Book of Psalms? Praising God. Psalm is thanking God always. You see, you, we will never, we will never learn to thank God always unless I learn how to persevere through my dark tunnels that come my way. When I go through hardships and I hang in there trusting in the Lord, this will teach me and will lift and build and raise in me and give birth something new to me called thanking God always, praising the Lord is the book of Psalms. And when you learn to praise the Lord always, always good times and bad times, this is marriage. The Lord is the groom. The church, us, the Christian, baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we are the bride to this groom. When we learn to thank the Lord Jesus in good times and bad times, 
He will take me up to the next level and he will bring me into the book of Proverbs, wisdom. Perseverance gives you thanking, a life of thankfulness. A life of thankfulness gives you wisdom. Wisdom brings you into Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is the book of repentance. How to live a life of repentance on earth from birth to grave. How do I live a life of repentance? I need to be a repentant soul always. This will never happen unless God makes me wise. I will never learn, will never know how to ask for forgiveness if God does not give me his wisdom. And when I become wise, then I live repentance, Ecclesiastes, he will bring me into the final frontier, the song of Solomon. He will bring me into his divine love. And I'll be called John the Beloved. John the Beloved laid his head on the chest, on the breast of Christ. I'm sure he heard his heartbeats. John, what was going through your head, through your heart, when you were hearing the heartbeats of Jesus? He says, this language is the language of love. When it is the language of love, the intellect, the tongue ceases. It's a different level. That is speaking in tongues, not gibberish. Speaking in tongues is the language of love. The language of love, when you speak it, everybody understands it. It's not hidden, it's not secret. Okay. Because you have kept my command in persev in, to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial. What is the hour of trial? The great tribulation, the seven years. The great tribulation. By the way, the great tribulation hasn't happened yet. Because the great tribulation is actually... Um, focused on Israel. There are certain things and certain prophecies that need to be fulfilled for the second coming of the Messiah. One of the th things that need to be fulfilled is the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. The temple of Solomon will have to be rebuilt. That hasn't taken place yet. Looks like there is a superpower that is going to come and is going to knock the Dome of the Rock and Masjid Al-Aqsa from the ma t t t Temple Mount and then build, rebuild the Temple of Solomon there. But when they build the Temple, that is the wrath of God coming on Israel, which is the Great Tribulation that will engulf the entire globe. I don't want to scare you. But World War III, nuclear war, will begin when Israel is striked. World War III will begin from the Middle East. By the way, everything began in the East, everything will end in the East. And if you want to have your faith tested to see where you are, go back to the East, go back to the roots where Christ came and receive your faith from there. And I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come, look at this, which shall come upon the whole world. The great tribulation will come upon the whole world. Now, um, some people have been saying, well, look, uh, I don't wanna, it's not a, it's not a, uh, here, uh, bad argument or uh, saying this is right and this is wrong, no. But everybody has got a different way of explaining things sometimes. But all I can say that this um, so-called vaccine, because so many people are concerned, is this jab the mark of the beast or not? And they, they are very concerned because the Holy Bible says if you take the jab or if you take 
in other words, the mark of the beast, your name will be wiped out of the book of life. I don't want my name to be wiped out of the book of life. I'm not worried about the vaccine. I'm worried about my name being plugged from the book of life. So is this vaccine the mark of the beast? All I can say, we'll come to it later. It's not now, but all I can say, this vaccine is the beginning to the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is not just an injection, is not just a chip, it is a governmental system called New World Order. That is the mark of the beast. It's a, it's a system that covers everything, not just your health, covers everything. Religion, education, pharmaceuticals, pharmakia, the big farmers, big mafias. Oops. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> if you can control people with... Now, I will come to this later, but I'll, I'll just touch base on it. Um, religion. Education. Um, music. Hollywood, Illuminati, <laughs> have you heard of this? Yeah, I'm sure you have. Yeah, Hollywood, my beautiful boys and girls, young men and women, my beautiful children, stay away from Hollywood. You don't need their music. You don't need their songs. They are of evil origin. Satan is behind it, one million percent. You see the Hollywood celebrities, the way they dance, the way they behave, the way they dress, absolute evil. I don't know, can't you figure this out? It's very clear as the daylight, very evil. You don't need their music. Listen to a song that praises the Lord Jesus. That's music, isn't it? Listen to something that is healthy. Listen to something that is gonna purify you, not defile you so let this celebrity come don't fill the stadium fill the churches with people not stadiums we've gone too far we need to come back religion music education um, health and there's another thing Finance, money, yeah, that's right, finance, money, that's right. So, again, religion, education, music, health, finance, money. You have these five, you can control people. You can control people. Let me tell you one thing. If you think that this jab is going to change and modify your DNA and is going to change your way of thinking, my beloved child, with all humility and love, the brain has been washed long time ago with the so-called technology, the iPad, the internet, YouTube, Facebook. These is the brainwashing of humanity. This one. Our brains have been washed long time ago. Not now. Not this jab. Technology has brainwashed us. We'll come to it when we, this, when we, you know, cover chapter 13. We'll come to it. Very interesting. John the Beloved wrote the book of Revelation in an island called Pedmos in the heart of the Mediterranean Sea in Greece over 2,000 years ago, or 2,000 years ago, more or less. Look what he's writing. And you're telling me, there is no God. How would he know how to write? How would he know how to write so precisely about aircraft, you know, fighters, jet fighters? How are they gonna strike the earth with fire from heaven? How would he know if it was not revealed from God to him? How would he know? At that time, there was camels, donkeys, and horses. No jet fighters, no planes, no nothing. 
He describes them beautifully. Um, verse 11, behold, I am coming quickly. When the great trial, when the hour of trial is going to come, he says, behold, I'm coming quickly. Why? Because that hour of trial, it's going to be unbearable. Very short, but it's going to feel like a lifetime. It's going to be so hard. What the world is going to see is beyond any comprehension. It's going to be so hard. He said, no one will be able to bear it, but don't worry. Don't panic. I'm coming quickly. Every time any one of us is in grave, grave danger, Christ doesn't come walking. He comes flying. The moment you say, that's it. I'm dead. It's finished. He changes it. Before you blink your eyes, He changes it. The moment you give up, Christ walks in. Never give up. Never say it's too late. Jesus is always here. How many times have we been through situations where we've said, I can't do this anymore. I can't carry on anymore. I don't have neither the strength nor the courage. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Lord, enough. It's over for me. The Lord is going to come and say, well, it's over for you, but it's never over for me. So why are you so worried about this? You think it's over? Do you think it's finished? Do you think that's it? You're dead? Excuse me? Who bought you with his blood? God. Not anyone. God. With his son's blood. On the cross. So this is not your battle. It's mine. It was never over. Until I say so my child. It's never over. Trust in this. Trust in this. The Lord will teach some people as we speak a lesson. They will know this is God. For them to know that there is no one that ever came on the face of this planet, nor will ever come that can say, I can do whatever I want, and there is no one that can stop me. Jesus will prove to them they have been deceived by Satan. And they will receive their, their payment very soon. And whatever they're plotting, it will never prosper. For I, the sinner, have asked my Lord to put their plan to shame. To learn and to understand and confess there is God in heaven. Satan is just a fallen angel. I feel sorry for him. For he missed out on Jesus Christ. I feel sorry for him. Whoever misses out on the Lord, you should feel sorry for them. Don't be ever angry. Sometimes Satan makes me very angry. But then I come back through the Lord's grace. I say, Lord, I shouldn't be angry. I really feel sorry for Satan. He has no portion with you at the end. Poor thing. That's what you call a poor person. That his portion is not Christ. Then I'm poor. Materialistic materialism is not poorness. It's when you don't have Jesus, that is the true poorness. Verse 11, Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. Whatever you have, is your faith like a mustard seed? Hold on to it. If that's all you could have achieved, you don't have any greater faith than this mustard seed, then hold on to this faith of a mustard seed. Until I come, hold on to what you have. Don't lose hope. 
just trust that I have promised you, I'm with you, I'm coming. And very quickly, before you know it, I'm coming to change everything. The Lord deliberately sent the disciples in that little boat across the, the Sea of Galilee. And the Lord knew that this wind is going to come and make the sea wild. He knew. He deliberately stayed on the dry land. And then the sea went wild. The, the water started coming into this little boat. The disciples lost it. They forgot that only a couple of hours ago, Jesus fed 5,000 men, not including children and women, with five loaves of bread, Baalbak Habibi, and two fish. He felt all this multitude. They forgot. When they saw the sea going wild, the waves, the currents against them, they said, Lord, where are you? Come to our rescue. Come to our rescue. Not a whisper of Jesus, not a blink of an eye, nothing. They kept on crying out from 6 p.m. And on the last, very last minute, they saw the Lord walking on this wild sea. Walking, meaning all the waves, all this wild ocean is under his feet. He stepped on every tribulation that came your way. He stepped on every trial that came your way. He stepped on every hardship that came your way. And when they saw him, they couldn't believe it. Is it a ghost or is he real? Are you or are you not? He said to them, do you want to find out if it's me really or it's just an imagination? Simon, come out of the boat and walk on water like me. He did. At the beginning, he did. But what happened? The human element kicked in and he said, I'm scared. Let me just look for a split second to my right hand and see how big the wave that is coming my way. The moment he took his eyes off Christ, he drowned. But when he was focused on the Lord, he walked on the water. Read the Bible. He walked. But you take your eyes off Christ. The current of the world, the temptations of the world, the tribulations of the world will drown you. So what's happening now? We are watching through this channel and that channel and this YouTube and that YouTube. Let me see what this doctor is saying. Let me see what this guy is saying. And we are go oh, no, this is it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Noise pollution. So what I've done, I am going in a big cyclone of noise pollution. I've lost touch of Christ. Let me say, okay, we found out that Corona was a lie. It was a, it was a, was a deliberate, it was deliberate anyway. Yeah. So Corona, okay, we found out it was, February, it was actually done deliberately, yes, and uh, and this guy, Bill Gates, and George Soros, and the likes, they want to control these globalists, they want to control the world, and introduce their great reset, and their new world order, and bring everyone into and, and under their jurisdiction. Okay, we found all this out. And we knew exactly what happened. And we knew exactly where it came from. And we knew exactly what it is. Okay, what are you going to do about it? Can you do something? No. What are you going to do? You found all this out. And then? You need to come back to Christ. Ask for forgiveness. Pray to the Lord and say, Lord, because of my sins, this is what has become of this world. I have sinned. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry. When you come back to the Lord and ask for forgiveness, the Lord is the one who can stop this. None of us can. None of us can. Because what's happening in the world is greater than anyone. You know why? Because it's a spiritual war. It's not a physical one. You cannot fight the enemy. The enemy is spirit. You cannot fight against an enemy you do not see. He sees you, but you cannot. 
How can you overcome the enemy that is invisible? The only one who overcame the enemy is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let him come and step on this enemy once again. And then you'll see everything falling into place. We need to have rallies of repentance. We need to have rallies of making penances. We need to have rallies of saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm making you my Lord, my God today. I'm coming back to you. Make me your child once again. Lord, intervene quickly. Put an end to this satanic agenda. You can go and ask the prime minister all day long. You can go and ask the president all day long. You can go and ask the governor general all day long. If these people are corrupt, and I'm saying if, if they are corrupt, what are they going to do for you, my dear friend? <laughs> Nothing comes good out of good out of people. Goodness only comes out of good God, our good God, Jesus Christ. We need to come back to the Lord. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have. And no one may take your crown. Keep your faith so you don't lose the crown of glory that Christ is about to give you in the end. Verse 12. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Wow. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Now when you see buildings that has pillars inside of them, these pillars, they carry the weight of the roof. Have you ever seen a pillar moving? Have you ever seen a pillar being shaken? Have you ever seen a pillar going and coming out, in and out, in and out? No. When you place a pillar, the pillar stays there, unshakable, unbreakable. What the Lord is saying, if you overcome all these trials that come your way, I'll make you that pillar in the house of my God, meaning I will put you in that position. No one can take it from you. No one can take it away from you. You'll be that pillar, unbreakable, unshakable. It's all right, don't worry. Some firecrackers are going. It's Christmas. Enjoy. Yeah, stop focusing on coronas. Focus on the fire fireworks. Oh, what a feeling, Corona. <laughs> Toyota. Okay. I'll make you that pillar. Meaning, you will never be lost. I will make sure that you are instilled in that spot, in that position. No one can shake you. No one can break you. No one can take it away from you. Pillar. In the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more. Because the pillar can't move. I'll put you in the temple of my God forever. In the house of my father forever. I will write on him the name of my God. Who can tell me what the Lord is meaning here? I will write on that person that I'll make a pillar who persevered through all the trials. I will write on that person the name of my God. What name is the Lord referring to? Father. I will write on that person the name of my God. I will make my God, your father. And since God became your father, you will be the next statement. I will make, I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. And the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem is the Father's house. The new Jerusalem is the place where the Lord Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father. The right hand of the Father is the new Jerusalem. The right hand of the Father is the new Jerusalem. And I'll give you two meanings to the word Jerusalem. When you read it in Hebrew or Syriac, Aramaic, it is Ur Shalim. That is the proper pronunciation. Ur Shalim. It is a compounded word. Two words in one. Ur 
can mean city. Shalim, peace. So Jerusalem, Ur Shalim, means the city of peace. And it can also mean, Ur can mean path, Shalim, end, or road. Ur means road, Shalim is the end. So Ur Shalim is the city of peace, and it is the end of the road. Everything began from Ur Shalim, and everything will end in Ur Shalim. From there we came, to there we shall go back. We came from God, we're going to go back to God. God is the king of Ur Shalim, the city of peace and the end of the road. And I will write on him the name of my God, Father, and the name of the city of my God, the, the new Jerusalem, the city of peace, and the end of the road. In the end, you will come back to me, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. Jesus saying, I will write on him my new name. Since I will write on that person my God's name, which is Father, then my new name will be the Son. God will be your dad. And you will be the son through the son of God. And this is the new name that you're going to take with you forever. On earth, through baptism, we became children of God. But have we protected, have we preserved this name? No, because we sinned. So one day I was the son of God. The next I was the slave of Satan. But there, when I make you that pillar, where no more you're going to go out, meaning no more you're going to sin, then and then only, the new name, the Son of God, will be with you forever and ever and ever. You will never come out of this name. The Son of God. And the Son is the one who inherits his Father. The Son is the heir to the throne the inheritor of the kingdom. Wherever the father has is mine. Everything that my dad has is mine. The title deed is in my name. I own the kingdom of God. So don't worry about going to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God came to you and God gave it for you. And the Lord's Prayer, every time you pray, you say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your kingdom come. So I ask any Christian, I say, do you want to go to God's kingdom? Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to go there. No, you don't need to go. The kingdom came to you. You can't go there unless the kingdom came. See, if the kingdom didn't come, how can you go there? You don't know the way. You can't go up. But the kingdom came to take you there. So you don't need to go to the kingdom. The kingdom came. All you need to do is how to learn to live in this kingdom. You need to learn on how to live. And I'll say this to you. A kingdom is a country, is a place. And every country there is ways to travel in it. Uh, in Sydney, there are ways to get from Fairfield to Liverpool, to Petersham, to... What's that place around the Bondi Beach? <laughs> um, there, are, there are ways to travel. And the kingdom of heaven that came to earth to take you to heaven, there is only one way in the kingdom of heaven. And that is the way of becoming a child. That is the way to travel and to live in the kingdom of heaven. Unless you become a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God. You need to be a child. Child on earth knows without mom and dad, I'm dead. 
not it's going to be hard. No, without mom and dad, I'm dead. If mom and dad do not wash me, do not feed me, do not clothe me, do not take me to hospital to give me medications when I'm sick, I am 100% dead without mom and dad. Do we as Christians say without Christ we are dead? Do we? Or are we saying, you know what Jesus, time out, I can do it now on my own, I don't need you. I'll come to you when I need your help. No, you are a child in the kingdom of heaven. And a child says, always without mom and dad, I'm dead. Always, not sometimes. A baby. You leave the baby in their bed, in their room, and you as a mom walk out. World War Three erupts. How dare you walk out of the room and leave me behind, you naughty mama. How dare you? They will turn the whole world upside down until mom or dad come running. Habibi, why you cry? Come to mama, come to papa. The moment you stretch your arms, the baby eh, leaps with joy. All the tears are gone. All the sorrows are gone. All the pains are gone. Tri cry turns into laughter. Sadness into joy. Despair into happiness. On top of the world, the baby says, I don't care, mom or dad, where are you going to go with me? All I care about is I'm with you. The baby never asks the dad, where are we going? Who are we meeting? How long are we going to be? When are we coming, coming back home? The baby cares nothing about no one, about absolutely nothing. All the baby cares about is I'm with my dad. That's what matters. Are we as Christians like a baby? Lord, I don't care where you take me. Whether you take me through the valley of the shadow of death. You, you want to take me to hell? So be it. You want to take me to heaven? So be it. Neither heaven nor hell matters for me, Lord, for I am a baby of yours. All that matters to me is I'm with you, Daddy. So take me wherever you wish and how long you want to take me for. It matters not. My happiness, my joy is I am with my Daddy. This is the way we need to live with Christ. Not time it. Oh, the Holy Mass went for too long. Father, can you please be a bit considerate? I have commitments. So you're making it difficult to be with the Lord for two, three hours, but it's okay to be in the world for the rest of your life. And then you don't want Jesus to reprimand you, to discipline you and twist your ear. He's daddy. When we become naughty, daddy disciplines us. Corona is a disciplinary action from Christ to his naughty Christian children. The baby, you smack them, they hate you. You give them a lolly, they love you on the spot. There is no grudges, there is no hatred here. The heart is beautiful. You smacked me, you gave me a lolly, I love you now, I forgot about the smack. Can we let go please? Stop holding things in your heart because it's going to rot. Whoever hurt you, forgive them. Don't hold it in your heart. Let go. Be like a baby. Be like a baby. And I will write on him my new name the Son of God forever. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Philadelphia, everything the Lord says about Philadelphia is good. When we come back next time about Laodicea, everything the Lord says about Laodicea is bad. Totally opposite of Philadelphia. And we are living in the time of Laodicea. 100%. Our time is Leodiki. 
but they will have to stay till next year. <laughs> Today is the last day of our Bible preach for this year. We're going to take a couple of weeks off, a small break. I, I feel very bad about it, but again, it's Christmas time, it's the festive season. I'm sure uh, all of us are going to be busy going, coming, you know. Uh, we need a small break. Um, for me, it's not going to be a very big break. I'll be preparing for the Bible course <laughs> for next year, so I'll need some time so I can prepare for the Bible course for next year, God willing. So um, <clears throat> Philadelphia, we finalize it today, and today is the last session for this year. Uh, with the Lord's grace, we will be coming back to continue the commentary on the book of Revelation on the 7th of January, 2022, with the Lord's grace. So please, die rise it. 7th of January is the day we come back. So we're going to have three weeks off. And the fourth week, we are back, which is the 7th of January, to continue Laodicea and then move on to the other chapters. Uh, 7 p.m., yes. Uh, does, does 7 p.m. work fine or is that all right? Yes, very good. So yes. So we, 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 I thought we leave you with brotherly love. Yes. <laughs> So we leave you with brotherly love, and I pray that we always stay in this brotherly love. We'll love one another, my beloved. When you come to the church, don't ever say, who is this stranger? We are one family. You, you are Lebanese, you are Jordanian, you are Italian, you are Serbian, you are Macedonian, you are Australian, you are Assyrian, you are Chinese, Indian, Vietnamese, all walks of life. When you have Jesus, your Lord and Savior, we are one family, period. There is no stranger. The only stranger in the midst of us is Satan. So away with you, Satan, in Jesus' mighty name. But all of us are brothers in Christ, even though you may be Armenian and good-looking Armenian. Inchpi says, love it. See, I speak quite a few languages. Um, we are one. Christ is the one who unites us. We're one. No one is a stranger here. No one. If you have been baptized in Jesus' mighty name, in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, we're one. We're a family. We are a family. So um, we leave you with the brotherly love. And until the 7th of January, I pray that you guys are always in good health and good spirit. I pray that uh, you'll always be close to the Lord Jesus. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord guide you. May the Lord preserve you. May the Lord enlighten your way. May the Lord show you what His will is in your lives so that you may glorify Him. May the name of Christ be glorified through His children. May the name of Christ be glorified through his children. Just one thing. Um, I don't know if you have the announcements. Um, Christmas carols. We are ce celebrating Christmas car car carols here on Saturday the 18th of December at 6 p.m. Uh, I pray that I could see, if not all of you, but hopefully some of you that can make it. I wish you could all make it. It would be wonderful. Um, we're having Christmas carols here in the church on Saturday the 18th of December at 6 p.m. sharp. And then with the liturgies, by the way, the divine liturgy is continuing. So Sunday is the divine liturgy in English at 6 p.m. And we've been having this divine liturgy every Sunday at 6 p.m. So that is continuing. The only thing is going to be different is going to be on the um, 25th of December, which is a Saturday, which is the, the, uh, the feast uh, or the, the birth of the Lord. So on Saturday, the 25th of December, we will have the English Mass on Saturday, 6 p.m., celebrating the Feast of the Nativity. Um, but the following Sunday, 26th of December, we're not going to have the English Mass just for that Sunday. For more information and details, please visit the church website, Christ the Good Shepherd Church website. All these informations are there. So I don't want to bother you and bombard you with all this information. Visit the church website to know exactly what date and when and how. Um, 
next Bible course, 2022. Whoa-ho. When 2000 came or was about to come, everybody was on their toes. It's the end of the world. The computer system is going to crash. The economy is going to crash. 2000, it's the end. It's the end. And Jehovah's Witnesses were very <laughs> going for it, baby. One day they said it's 1917 and then 1935. Heads or tails, they didn't get it till now. So anyway, relax. It's still not the end of the world and we're coming into 2022. So um, Bible course for next year is going to be um, beginning of Feb. Um, I'll, I think it'll be on Tuesdays, uh, 7.30 p.m. It's beginning on the 1st of February. For those who wish to enroll, and I encourage you to enroll, this is going to be obviously in English, so I encourage you to enroll because it will be another insight to the Holy Bible. Now please do not swap Bible course with Bible preach. They are both as important. You cannot swap them. You cannot say, I'll do this instead of this. No, no. I wish you can come to both. Bible preaching and Bible course. Bible course is like a classroom. You are in a classroom environment, you'll have the Holy Bible, the pen, paper, and notes, and we're going to go through biblical references a lot. So it's going to be a Bible study. It's more in details, more in depth. I can show you, hang in there for 2022. We pray it's going to be a good year. Pray, my beloveds, for all these agendas and whatever is happening and all these pandemics and pandemics. Ask the Lord to wipe it. Ask the Lord to put an end to it because he can. So pray and ask the Lord. So we do this course for 2022. At the end of the year, I can assure you, you would have gained a lot of information, a lot of information. And it is biblical. It is apostolic teaching. It is church fathers. We go back to the roots, not just any teaching. No, we need to go back to the foundation how the Lord intended for his word to be expressed and to be taught. So it's going to be apostolic teaching, uh, church fathers going back to the foundation. Very important for our time and age to learn the true teaching of the, uh, of the church. Um, so enroll your names. Uh, Sister Mary will be sitting at the back when you leave the church. You can go straight to Sister Mary, our beloved nun, and you can put your name down for the Bible course for 2022. Um, there is a small fee. If you can't pay, that's fine. But if you can, it's $100. If you can't, don't worry, don't worry. I'll pay it for you, don't worry. It's just to cover the materials, that's all. Because we're going to provide you with the Holy Bible, with uh, a case, books, pens, and notebooks and, and the likes. So it's just to cover the materials. Divine Heart Sunday School for our beautiful angels. Those parents who wish to enroll their children from the ages of 4 to 13. For next year, Divine Heart Sunday School, you can again see Sister Mary and put your the children's names for the Divine Heart Sunday School. God willing, next year, we pray that the Sunday school will come back. We're going to have uh, Sunday school in the morning to go hand in hand with the Holy Mass in Assyrian. And we'll have the Sunday school in the evening to go hand in hand with the English um, Divine Liturgy. So if you're coming in the evenings, you can bring your children from the ages of 4 to 13. And the teachers will look after them, teach them scripture, teach them prayers and the environment of Christ while you are enjoying the Holy Mass service without any interruptions or wah, 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 wah. Um, Food Angel, I just want to let you know that we've been saying that we're going to be sending these food hampers overseas. We, we mentioned Lebanon, Syria, uh, Turkey, Africa, Iraq, Jordan. We have already sent money. All those people who have donated, all those people who have supported this initiative, may the Lord bless you abundantly. But I'm just letting you know that the money has already been sent. Food is going on its way to people in Lebanon, to people in Syria, to people in Turkey as well. And we're going to reach out very soon, Iraq, Jordan, and Africa. So we thank the Lord Jesus uh, for uh, all of you and for those people who are working in this program. May the Lord bless you all abundantly. This is how we make the Lord happy 
I was hungry, you fed me, I was thirsty, you quenched my thirst, I was naked, you clothed me, and so on. This is how we make the Lord happy. Uh, may the Lord Jesus bless you all, guide you and protect you, and deliver you from every evil tribulation, whether it be visible or invisible. And I'm trying my hardest not to put an end to this, this evening, because I'll be crying for the next three weeks. From the bottom of my heart, you are the reason for me to be standing and carrying on. You give me that courage. Every time I come to be with you, you give me that oxygen that I live on. I, I, I'm saying it from the bottom of my heart. I cannot wait for Fridays to come because that's when I breathe. Because the word of the Lord, when I share it through His grace, through the Holy Spirit and the love of God the Father, the word of our Lord and, and Savior Jesus Christ, when I share it with you, that is the reason for me to be alive. The moment I walk out, I am the weak, hopeless, useless servant, the unworthy. But here, I stand so proud, so strong, because I am in the presence of the children of Christ. And they've come to hear their daddy talking to them. And they come to hear the truth, the word that is the life-giving word. That what gives me the strength, this courage to say, life is still good and it's not LG, but life is still good because the manufacturer is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you for continuing to come. And I pray that you will always continue to come this year, next year, and many, many more years to come. And I pray that the Lord Jesus use you to the brim, to the maximum, so that you can be also apostles of Christ. And through you, Jesus, you know, raises the dead. Through you, Jesus brings the lost sheep back to the fold. May the Lord use you and make you the reason for so many distant souls from the Lord to come back. You be that reason, my beloved. I pray that the Lord make you that salt of the earth and the light of the world. So they taste the love of Christ through you and they see the light of Christ through you, my beloved. I pray for good health, physically, spiritually, to you, to your families, to your loved ones, to every Christian, to every human being. We pray for the love of Christ to dwell in every heart. We pray for the light of Christ to dwell in every home. We pray for every country. We pray for every nation. We pray for every government. We pray for every church leader, for, for Christ to be glorified through them. We pray for the conversion of souls, for people to come from the world and have an encounter with Christ. For He is the only way, He is the only truth, and He is the only life, my beloved. Until you meet Christ, you have no idea what you're doing. You have no idea what you're missing out on. Jesus is the reason for the season. And on His nativity, when He was born, God became man. God became man. A governor of Milano, once... He was a very good man, a very good Christian, good Italian Christian. All the city of Milan used to come complaining, opening up to him and telling him their problems and their stories. One day he stood and he thought between himself and he said, people have been coming to me, asking for help all these years, enough of this. So one day he stood in front of all the public and he said, my beloved citizen of Milano, You've been coming to me all these years with your problems. I'm telling you today, since God became man, there is no problem. What is your problem now? God became man, meaning you can go to him. He became like you. When he was God alone, 
No one ever saw him. No one ever met him. No one ever was able to get to him. But since he came to us and became like us a man, now I can go hug him, embrace him and say, Jesus, I need this and this and this. You, he can relate and you can relate to him. You don't have a problem since God became